Now I'd like to talk about the role, sorry, the, some examples of software architecture. Um, I'll describe them briefly. Uh, each of these uh, has a, a full lecture devoted to them later in the uh, later in the series of lectures. When, when these are recorded lectures, it doesn't talking about sequence of lectures doesn't make sense. Nevertheless, I haven't recorded them yet. Uh, one of the things to to think about is that uh, engineers do use models a lot. Um, simply because it is much easier to manipulate a mathematical model than it is to try and figure out what we do with, with a 200 floor concrete building uh, or you know, 200 kilometers of road or this whatever it is we're doing. Now, similarly, um, architecture or software architecture is a model of the system, a model of um, the, the um, problem, how this problem is being solved and the role of the system in, in solving that problem. And it's much better and cheaper to try and investigate the problem using the model that is the architecture than it is to try and build the system and then try to figure out how we do with it. So with that, let's start on the first of them. Now the web bulletin board is probably a fairly typical and very popular uh, application. Um, now this is very similar to what preceded it, which was the database-centered system. We had a database and you had uh, applications that got data into the database and applications that took it out of the database and maybe modified what was in there. A lot of web applications are pretty much like that. They, they get information, they present information, um, and the system stores it in some fashion. Uh, now, uh, having said that, I do acknowledge that there are other complications and there, you know, nothing is purely one thing or the other. So there are complications such as um, um, electronic commerce systems or there are you know, other, other stuff. But for the moment, let's say, okay, here we have a typical web application architecture where we have a presentation layer, a logic layer, and a data layer. And this three layers is a very, very typical um, structuring of the architecture of these systems. They do get bigger and more complex than that, but that'll do for the moment. The next one I have there is uh, an image processing system. It's representative of um, a class of um, problems or class of uh, systems where uh, a lot of attention is paid to uh, having to convert from uh, one format into another format or one, one thing into another thing. And that conversion um, could be difficult or uh, multi-stepped. And, um, uh, different for different things. To give you an idea of the context, um, there are a number of medical imaging uh, cons consultings, consultancies, um, clinics, medical imaging clinics around. And they have a, a number of um, imaging devices for x-ray, ultrasound, um, CAT scans, so CMTs, um, those kind of things. Each of these imaging systems will produce an image in the format of the device concern and the format appropriate to the device. That's cool. Now, how are we going to store these? How are we going to print them? How are we going to transmit them from place to place? Normally, we need them in some common format, and we have to convert them all to some common format. Yeah, sometimes we don't. Sometimes you can have them in a raw format, but uh, the, the problem is um, what happens when we don't? What happens when we need them in this common format? Now, each of these formats would probably have multiple steps to convert from their native format into the common format, and each of those steps would have to be done in sequence. But the steps might, might or might not be the same across the different native formats, um, and might or might, yeah, sorry. You may get common steps. Um, it's unlikely they will be done out of sequence across two different formats. Um, but it's rare that you would get the same steps to convert the same, to convert two different native formats into this common uh, format. So uh, somewhere along the way, the, the uh, transformation steps are going to be different. Uh, 
The architecture of these systems is what's called a pipes and filters system. That is, the data comes through a pipe and it's filtered. It goes through another pipe and it's filtered or transformed. It goes through another pipe and it's filtered or transformed. And as many pipes as necessary to get it transformed into the format that you want it. Now, depending on the native format, uh, there would be different filters and a different number of them. Um, but rarely is the sequence of the filters uh, different. So that's a pipes and filter system. The pipes um, usually are files, and the filters are uh, transformation programs or, or filtering programs in some form. Now the next system is an embedded system. Um, these are the kind of things that uh, you'd find in uh, smart meters, so um, you know, metering devices. They're also um, the kind of control systems you find in autonomous vehicles or robots. These are also embedded systems. Now, it used to be that the, the big constraint on an embedded system was the um, small CPU power and the lack of resources. Now, with an autonomous vehicle, that's just not the case, nor is it with a robot. Um, increasingly, the amount of computing power and uh, computer resources that are available even to a small smart meter are quite considerable. So that's less of a constraint than it was. Not entirely gone, but less of a constraint. However, what is a constraint that doesn't necessarily apply to other systems is they, um, they have to have a predictable performance. And this means you can't have things like virtual memory or um, dynamic memory allocation and garbage collection. So usually the operating system is a bit different and the way the programs are structured are a bit different. And these things become a class of systems themselves. So the real-time embedded systems or control systems uh, are a class of systems and they, they do have their own architecture requirements. One that I think I should mention is the workflow management system. Uh, this is a bit different from your standard web application because the workflow itself uh, does need to have some form of orchestration, some form of oversight uh, to take care of variations and sequencing and you know, combinations because the workflow could be split out to two separate parties and needs to be um, brought back again. There are standard systems for um, business process uh, business process management. Microsoft's got an engine for it. And I'm sure there are other people who have engines for it. And the, um, there are languages for them as well. So the um, business, process, business process management notation, BPMN is the language for it. There is um, BPAL, business process something language. Um, there are, um, as I say, complete applications that are, that are there for these, uh, including the orchestration. However, um, possibly the, you know, you're not necessarily doing a B2B electronic commerce uh, system, so you may have to devise this um, work process, workflow system yourself. And there are some requirements for that. And uh, usually it is in the area of the, the monitoring and supervision and orchestration of the um, uh, workflow. So this is a, a brief look at some of the very typical um, styles of architecture you may uh, find yourself dealing with. Um, now each of them is in their own way and I repeat, the architecture is a model of the system we're trying to build. It's the whole point of a model and the usefulness of a model is to explore the problem and the solution before we commit a lot of resources and money and time into building that solution um, where uh, it, it's very expensive and very disappointing to find a major error. There are some very well established uh, architectural styles or architectural patterns um, and I've described four of them. That is the web based system, the pipes and filter systems, the um, embedded software system and the workflow system. Um, there are a couple more, but we'll deal with them later. Um, and also, I'll be dealing with architectural patterns um, at a later uh, series of talks.